What's going on? Welcome back to Iron Anchor Cycles. I'm very excited to get started on the project that we have for today, and hopefully you can see what's right here over my right shoulder, and that's a Lowrider ST El Diablo edition. So the El Diablo is the first of the custom Lowrider STs. At this point, there's only two. There's this one and the Fast Johnny. We've been fortunate to see a few of these in the shop thus far, uh, but haven't done a ton of content on them. So I figured this was an opportunity to uh, show you guys one of these and show you what we're gonna do to it. So this one's a little bit interesting. It's not stock. Uh, so basically what happened is, I guess we're, we're far enough away now from the release of these that these El Diablos have started to change hands. So this is a second owner bike and truthfully, most of what we're gonna be doing is undoing what the first owner did to this bike and either returning some of it to stock uh, and in more cases, making some upgrades of our own. So some of the things you'll be able to see on this bike, and perhaps you'll see it as we get a little bit closer, but uh, the things that jump out at me uh, in terms of things that have been done to the bike, set of uh, Cobra slip-ons on here, these are gonna be coming off along with the stock head pipes. We're gonna put a proper pipe on it. We've got uh, bunking rear uh, passenger peg sliders. These are gonna stay. Got some Thrashin mini footboards. These are gonna stay as well. Uh, but what you will notice is that these footboards are not in the original location. This bike was swapped over to forward controls. So what's on here is the Harley Davidson uh, P&A kit uh, for forward controls. Now, what's kind of cool about what Harley's done is obviously some of the soft tails come with forwards and some of them come with mids. And what they've done is created some P&A kits that allow you to switch back and forth, but they're created two different versions of those kits. So there's the easier, more expensive route, which is the non-OE version where you are not having to open up the inner primary to change the inner shifter shaft, or basically it sort of routes things on the outside. That's not our preferred method. Our preferred method is the p &A kit that comes with OE mids. So this bike would have come with OE mids, so it's already got the primary cover that's got the hole in it for the shifter shaft to go through, and you'll see that when we're on the other side. Um, but all the hardware is gone. So we purchased the uh, OE style PNA mids that are gonna go on this bike. And then what we'll be left with is what would be the equivalent of what went on here, which is the PNA forwards. So I imagine our customer will try and sell these forwards to somebody who wants them, but certainly he doesn't and I couldn't agree more. So that's one of the things we're gonna be changing while we're in here. Also, hopefully you can see we're a little far away from the camera now, but um, this, is a, this is a Harley part um, from the P&A catalog. It kind of looks like, a, I don't know, Kiryakin or one of those sort of wonky style, uh, you know, engine guard footrests. We're gonna be taking that off and we're gonna be putting on a matching uh, Bunking uh, uh, crash protection up in the front. Just gonna match the modern styling a little bit better. Um, part of what goes on here, and you'll see it, is we're gonna have to put a, the original fairing support bracket back on here. So we've got one of those from Harley. Uh, we're also going to be doing a quick upgrade on the rear suspension. Uh, at the time we're filming this, this is sort of shortly after Harley uh, announced their recall on the little screw that kept breaking on the uh, Softail Monoshock remote reservoir mount under the seat and causing it to fall down and get caught in the tire and the fender and screw a whole bunch of things up. So rather than uh, deal with that, the customer is making what I think is a great decision, uh, which is to just upgrade that shock. So we're going to be putting an Olean's Monoshock on here. Um, so that's gonna work really well. We've also got some other little things we're gonna do uh, while I'm back here. Um, I'm gonna clean up this rear tail section a little bit, get these turn signals off, clean stuff up a little. I'll show you that, I'm kind of excited for that. And then finally, we've got a set of bars and risers to go on here. So it's gonna be a pretty good facelift. Uh, the only thing I didn't mention is we've got one of our Iron Anchor uh, step-up seats, which are become pretty popular. So we're putting one of those on here as well and uh, we'll see what this bike looks like and see how she runs once we get it all done. So if any of that interests you, stick around. I'm gonna kind of go through showing you the, all these little projects in a couple of stages here. And uh, I don't know, it's gonna be a good one. So stick around and we'll get to it. Okay, so here's a little bit different view. So maybe you can see a little bit better kind of some of the stuff we've got going on here that's gonna come off. Um, we've got our forward controls here this crash guard that's on here, and then uh, these sort of different fairing support brackets. All this stuff's gonna come off so we can put, like I said, the mid controls back on. We're gonna keep these foot pegs and we're gonna put a bunking crash bar on here. We're also gonna be changing this pipe out. So we've got a bunch of stuff to do on this bike, sort of a whole punch list, and they're kind of in different functional areas. And sort of the way I've decided to divide this up is 
we're gonna start by doing the pipe and the foot controls and the crash guard. I think the next step after that is gonna be uh, coming and doing the rear sort of tail section. So that's gonna be the lighting changes back here that we're doing and we'll get to all that and I'll show you those parts when we get there. Uh, at the same time we do that, I'm gonna do the rear suspension. And then I'm pretty sure that's most of what sort of has to go on down here. And then I think we'll finish off by coming back up to the top and taking care of the new bars. So that's kind of the plan. If some of those things interest you more than others, you can jump around a little bit. But for now, I'm gonna get started with doing the disassembly on the stuff I mentioned. Uh, the only thing that's been, that's been done so far is I've got the bags and side covers off. So I'm just gonna keep carrying on with taking some of this stuff off and then uh, we'll look at some of the parts that are gonna go on. Okay, so we've got the pipes off and the footboard off over here. Next thing I want to do is we're going to get into taking this uh, crash guard off and uh, then we're going to get probably the rest of these controls off over here. We have to go over to the other side, do a little bit of disassembly over there as well. Actually, a lot of disassembly because we got to get the whole primary apart so we can put the uh, shift linkage back in. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, this is interesting. I want to show you this part uh, when I take it off so uh, you can see uh, how little protection this piece is actually going to offer to this bike. Um, I'll show it to you compared to the Bung King one, but the way that this mounts down here, there is one bolt with one tiny little tab that holds this onto the frame as opposed to a big robust bracket like you'd see on a crash guard actually designed to protect the bike. This one, I don't even know if it's marketed as an engine guard or a crash guard, to be honest with you, but this is a foot rest. And honestly, I don't even know how you'd get your foot up on here with this air cleaner here anyway, but in my opinion, this is doing this bike absolutely zero benefit. Uh, but anyway, I'll show you that part when it comes off. So uh, yeah, like I said, gonna do a little disassembly on here. Um, gotta figure out how this bracket comes off up here. I think we just got a, a couple of screws holding the turn signal on. Just gotta disassemble all that. Probably gonna have to take the outer fairing off, I'm guessing, to get this, this bracket off, but uh, maybe not, I don't know. We'll find out. So anyway, I'm just gonna keep going with the disassembly and uh, we'll check in. Okay, so in order to take this fairing support bracket off that needs to be changed for the crash guard back to the original one, outer fairing does need to come off. And the first step in that process is taking the windshield off, which works out well for us anyway because the windshield is one of those details that we are gonna change on the bike. All right, so with the outer fairing out of the way, we can see the uh, screw here or bolt, if you will, that uh, we were trying to get at. So the nut is here on the inside and we got to be able to hold it from here. So that's why the fairing's got to come off. So before I take that off, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the turn signals from the brackets. So you've got a standard uh, JAE plug there and then there's a T40, I believe, fastener on the other side here that secures the turn signal onto the bracket. So I'm gonna take these off first. Okay. okay, so with the turn signals removed, I'm gonna go ahead and take the fairing side of it off and then we're gonna come down and take these two screws off and take it off of the bar here. So with our brackets out of the way, now we can move on to getting the actual engine guard off. So we've got one bolt up here in the middle, and then like I said, just one down on each side. So I'm gonna start by uh, taking, actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the top one first. All 
All right, so before we move on, I promised I would show you this part and uh, I will. So uh, up here at the top, this is pretty normal, just one point of attachment, uh, really just to keep the thing centered and from moving around. The bottom is where the real support needs to be. And I don't know, look at this. One little hole, one little tab. I mean, it's quarter inch steel. It's not, it's not weak, but this is a very small part very low down. When this bike tips, if it tips, and you get that force pressing on here, all that leverage from all the way up here onto this little thing, this thing is gonna bend and it is gonna sandwich right into the bike and probably do more damage than it would save. But that's just one man's opinion. I'll show you what the bunking bar looks like uh, when we grab it to put it on, but you'll see. Just remember what this looked like. There's one little, the one little tab here versus what the bunking one's gonna look like. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna go get rid of this thing and we can keep working. I think we're gonna move over to the other side of the bike uh, and start to get that side disassembled so we can get going with, uh, well, some new stuff. Okay, I'm gonna stop what we're working on for just a minute to ask for your help in supporting the channel. I'm doing my best to keep shooting videos and providing you all with regular content, but truthfully, it takes a lot to slow down the work we're doing, shoot and edit videos, and get them published. To say nothing of doing it every week, which is ultimately what we're trying to do. So all that said, I'm just gonna make one simple request, that if you like the content we're sharing, please hit the subscribe button, and better yet, the notification bell as well. It's a huge help in supporting the channel and helping us grow, and ultimately, for us to provide more content. Of course, if you happen to be in the market for any of the products that we've used in any of our builds, or are looking to get any work done by us, you can check all that out at ironanchorcycles.com. That's it, thanks for your support, and now back to the video. All right, over here on the left side of the bike, uh, we've got our primary oil drained and just some drips coming out here now from the drain plug. And we've got this pan here to collect the fluid when, uh, when the residual falls out when we pull the primary cover. But getting a little bit ahead of myself, uh, the reason that we need to pull the primary cover at all is because we have to take the entire primary out in order to get the shifter shaft, the mid controls back through here. So rather than having this long linkage here leading to the front, it's gonna be a short one leading to the mid control shifter arm here that's gonna come through uh, the primary here. So all this has to come off so we can slide that one piece through the back of the inner primary and then put it all back together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start off by just removing uh, the shift linkage here on this side. Um, you can actually do this and get it off on this side by holding this forward and taking this screw out first, but I'm just gonna take it off from this side now, push this out of the way, and then we'll take this side off once the inner primary is out of the way. Uh, so we'll do this, then we'll unbolt the uh, footrest. We'll get all this stuff taken off, and then I'll start working on the primary side, get the derby cover off, outer primary, all the inside internals, then the inner primary uh, after we get the starter motor disconnected as well. So a bunch of steps here, but it goes pretty fast, particularly on the disassembly. So uh, let's get cracking and uh, I'm just gonna work through it. All right. Well, that was a good start. Uh, I noticed that this uh, uh, Allen fastener right here was a little bit sort of rounded out. So my regular 3 16 Allen wasn't gonna fit. Uh, so I have uh, an RBRT uh, socket from Mac that's usually pretty good on the rounded over ones, but even that um, is just kind of spinning in here. So we've got our first little hiccup here, which is pretty unusual on a uh, new bike like this, but uh, Hey, you never know what somebody did in some stupid fashion in order to uh, put this on here. Fortunately, none of this stuff is being reused, so I'm gonna take back what I said before, and I'm just gonna disconnect the shifter arm from this side, and we'll take this all off as one assembly. Now, uh, this really never needs to get disconnected, even if somebody wanted to sell this and uh, uh, you know put it right back on, you'd be able to. Uh, I think once we are done with all of this, I'll you know ask the customer if he'd like me to get this off. Obviously we can do it. Uh, I'm just not gonna spend any time on it right now because we don't have to. So let me uh, change up my uh, tools here and we'll just take this uh, socket off instead. I'm sorry, not socket, this screw off instead. <laughs> this one was loose. So we had one that was stripped on the front and then the rear one here wasn't even tight. All right. So, that out of the way, I'm just gonna fold that over. 
just gonna throw this screw back in here just so we don't lose track of it. And now I'm gonna take the footrest off that's gonna take all this with it. So that is gonna be the next step. And actually, before I do that, just because it's here and I've got easy access to it, I'm just gonna go ahead now and just pull this shifter arm off uh, with a half inch wrench. And then we'll have this part at least separated. And then we'll deal with the foot pegs, or I'm sorry, the, the footboards uh, once we have it off the bike. All right, so there's our shifter. We'll set that aside. And we'll go ahead and take the bolts out. This look like T45s again. I think that's what I got on here. Yep. Okay. Somebody didn't want that coming off. All right, so that one is very tight and I don't want to break this bolt in here. So it is moving. I gave it a couple of little turns. It's probably all seized up with a whole bunch of corrosion like these uh, external fasteners on these Harleys tend to be, particularly down here. So I'm gonna give that a second. I just don't want to put any heat into it and start twisting the bolt. So it's good to just go a little bit at a time and uh, just kind of take it slow and, and do it like that. So. I'm gonna take a break for a second and uh, I'll just uh, come back and get this taken off. Just do a little bit at a time. All right, now it's coming out. All right, so there's our forward assembly taken off there. Make sure not to lose track of this little guy here. Might need it for the back. I'm not sure if we get another one in the kit or not, but uh, keep all this stuff just in case we need anything from it. And uh, I'm gonna put this down and we'll get to taking these covers off and start getting this primary disassembled. All right, so we got our cover removed, fluids dripping out here. We get our first look at the primary drive components. Everything at first glance looks pretty good. Don't expect anything else on a bike with, uh, you know, low miles uh, and new. So we're gonna just start taking this stuff apart. So no particular order, uh, starters gotta come out and the drive components have to come out. Um, just because uh, I'm standing here, I'm gonna start on this side. So. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is take out the primary chain tensioner, then we're gonna remove the uh, bolt for the uh, compensator, and we're gonna start to get the clutch side disassembled as well, and then we're gonna pull all of this out as an assembly. Then we've got some bolts in the back here that have to come off, and then the starter. So nothing too complicated, uh, just gotta follow the procedures and take out a whole bunch of hardware, and we'll get this cover off. So a little tip of the trade on these primary chain tensioners, uh, what you can do here is make a little room uh, to slide a zip tie through. And what that will do is hold the chain tensioner compressed so you'll be able to slide it back in without having to reset uh, the whole thing. So just grab that, pull that on there, get that nice and tight. And they say, you know, uh, you're better, you're good to leave this zip tie tail when you do this sticking out on this side so that if by some, I don't know, fluke, you forgot that this was on here when you put it back in, the zip tie would get in your way when you were trying to put the cover back on and you wouldn't be able to get it on. So it would tell you, hey, I got a uh, zip tie in there I got to take off, but I don't know. 
I don't know where else it would be. Oops. I don't know where else it would be, to be honest with you, shoved inside or something like that. But anyway, that's what they say. Right, so there's our tensioner. Almost no wear on it, as expected. All right, so next step here, I'm gonna grab the uh, locking tool here and we're gonna grab the impact gun and start to get this off. Although, I guess we could just uh, get this uh, clutch adjuster out of the way first. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So stand by, strike that, reverse it. We'll start over here, then we'll get the bolts removed. All right, so I know I mentioned the uh, locking tool. We actually probably aren't gonna need it uh, to take this stuff off with the impact gun, but uh, we'll use it on the way in when we tighten things up. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the clutch nut off first. This is a, a reverse thread, so make sure you run this in forwards to get it off. Okay, so there's one side. And Standard thread on the compensator bolt. So run in reverse as usual. This might come right off and might take a little bit of persuading, but one way or the other, it'll come off. Well, that hasn't moved even a little bit. So uh, we're gonna get started with a big ass breaker bar. So I am gonna get the locking tool and uh, we'll get this moving with the breaker bar then finish it up. Now she's turning. Ah! Yeah. That'll do it. Thanks, Harley. Okay, so all this stuff is disconnected now, so we just have to pull it all out. So a whole bunch of pieces to the compensator. Your best bet on that is keep track of them all. Just put them back in the same way they came out. Just grab as much as you can hold in one hand when you're taking it out. So I'm gonna take the small springs and all these front sections here and the clutch side. I'm gonna put this down right here. And then I'm gonna grab the larger compensator springs here. I'm gonna leave the shim washer in place. That's not getting in anybody's way. I'm just gonna put these down here. And we are one step closer. Okay, so from here, uh, you got kind of two more steps. Just got your 
bolts to take out and you've got the starter motor to pull. So I like to do the starter motor first, then come back, take these bolts out and pull it off. Uh, before I do that and go over to the other side and take the starter out, I'm just gonna uh, clean up a little bit of the parts and tools and stuff I got sitting here because when this comes off, the oil that's pooled underneath the uh, alternator or stator and rotor here, it's gonna pour out right here. And I can't really get my drain pan in because I got a bunch of stuff sitting there. So I'm gonna get that stuff cleared away and uh, we'll come back with doing the starter. I'll pull the camera over to the other side and just show you how I do it. It's real simple, it's two bolts, but um, hey, whatever, we'll film it. So uh, be right back. Oh, not much to see over here, but here we go nevertheless anyway. Uh, just get this little guy out of the way. So starter motor's right here. It's held on by two bolts on either side. So get yourself a long, uh, what is this, quarter inch Allen, a real long extension and be able to get those bolts. The front one is super easy because uh, you can see it. Just get it on there and get that one out. I'm gonna just leave that one for a sec. Just get that loosened. Now the rear one, you can kind of see in here, but it is a little bit of a bitch to get to. The service manual would have you uh, pull the battery and battery box out, um, but you don't really have to. You can get in there just like that and get that bad boy out. Boom. Okay. Rear, whoops. And I'll we'll just finish off the front. All right. Cool. So the bolts out, the starter will uh, slide back out of the primary. You can either sort of give a little tug from this side or push it from the other side. Um, this is a little easier said than done, if you can get your fingers in there. There's just an O-ring uh, that's, that's holding it, so just got to give it a little, little persuasion and it'll pop out. There we go. Got it. All right, so that's loose, ready to go. Let's go back to the other side. Okay, back on the other side. Last step was to get our uh, five bolts out here, so we'll pop those out and then we'll be able to just slide the inner primary right off. All right, so there it is. I'm gonna go put this aside so I can get all the oil cleaned off of it and uh, we'll keep going over here. All right, back over on the right side of the bike, we've got one last little bit of disassembly, which is to get this uh, brake pedal removed and the master cylinder disconnected from this bracket. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the uh, clevis pin from the master cylinder connection to the brake pedal. So I just need to remove the retaining clip first. Just gotta spin that through. Well, actually gotta go the other way, huh? Here we go. All right, so that's the clip I just removed which holds the clevis pin, which is right there. So we'll put these parts aside. All right, so our master is free from the brake pedal here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbolt the master itself from the bracket. Just get a little grease on my hands there. So 
So it's worth pointing out here that uh, you do not have to disconnect any brake lines or anything like that to do this. So no bleeding, nothing like that. So real easy when it comes to that. Okay. So the master is free now. That's gonna just fall down. And I just got one more bolt down here to get the brake pedal and bracket off the bike. And this is another, this is a interesting, I don't know, this bolt doesn't look original and it's a button head Allen, which I hate and I feel like I'm gonna strip it. So I'm gonna switch to the RBRT driver and see if I can get a better bite on it uh, than what this one feels like. Sorry, blocked the camera, but it's turning and not stripping, so that's a win. All right, so all that is gonna go in our takeoff pile and we're just gonna let the master cylinder kind of chill here. I'm gonna grab a little uh, bungee cord just to kind of hold this, just cause I don't want it pulling against uh, the connection in the line here. I don't mind normally leave, letting the front ones hang. It's not like a car where you've got a rubber brake line and like a you know 20 pound caliper. These stainless steel lines are plenty strong enough to hold up these calipers. But in this case, sort of at bending at an angle and I just don't like that. So. I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna get this secured out of the way, maybe with a zip tie. And then we're gonna go probably back to the other side uh, to start doing the reassembly. So it's a good stopping point for me for today. Uh, I'm gonna be taking care of some other things here at the shop, but we'll be right back with the continuation in about two seconds for you guys. So stick around. All right, so ready to go ahead and start to get this side put back together. Now, as I mentioned, we did all this disassembly for one part, and that part is this guy right here which is that inner shift shaft that I mentioned. So this is gonna sit right about here. It is gonna come through the primary and your shifter is gonna attach right here on the outside. And then your mid control shift linkage is gonna connect these two levers together. So this can only be installed with the outer primary off. So we take all this stuff off so we can slide this through. So I've got our inner primary over here. This is obviously the inside of it. Uh, we, I just popped the old seal out, put a new one in. And now, I'm sorry, this is a little hard to do. I'm just trying to do it on the camera, but this shifter shaft is just gonna slide in right here. Now, if you were doing this uh, on a bike that did not originally come with mid controls, you would obviously need to get yourself an inner primary that has this hole in it because the forward control bikes are not gonna have that hole there. So uh, that's basically that. So. This piece is ready to go back on. I'm just gonna set it to the side for one second because we've got one other thing to do here, which is I've got a new seal uh, for the uh, engine here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of oil and I'm just gonna coat the rubber part of this seal just really lightly, nothing, nothing crazy. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna give this surface one more quick little wipe down. All right, and then I can go ahead and put this seal in place here. And we are ready to put that primary on almost. One other thing I'm gonna do is just a little bit of precaution, which is I'm gonna put some electrical tape over the splines on the output shaft from the transmission. And this is gonna be to protect the seal on the primary uh, in the event that we kinda, 
uh, hit it on there a little bit as we're putting it on. Don't want to mess up that new seal that we just put in. So we're good there. Take a slight little bit of oil as well. Just put it onto this bearing race. Uh, there is oil. I did put some oil around the lip of the seal uh, that we just put into the inner primary. So everything should slide on real nice. So that said, grab our inner primary and start to put this on. Obviously, sort of the most important thing here is being cognizant of that seal and just getting it to slide nicely over the race there. Get everything all nice and lined up. And this should just sit down. We got everything in place, which we do. There we go. All right. Boom. All right. So your starter can get a little bit in the way depending on how it's sitting. Um, ours is fine. It's not getting hung up or anything. So that's that. So there's your primary in place. We still have to change this seal, uh, but I'll grab that off once we get the bolts put in here. So the next thing we need to do is take our original bolts and obviously you just want to clean those up and take a look at these seals here under the flanges of the bolts and if they need to be clean or uh, replaced, if they're not in good shape, you can do that at this point too. Ours look fine on that, so I'm going to leave them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just get those put in. Just got to grab uh, the wrench and the torque wrench and uh, we'll get this all tightened down. All right, so once the primary is connected, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just get the starter put back in here. Um, I'm just gonna start and try and get it lined up from this side. And then we'll go over to the other side and get the hardware put in. Okay, so there's a couple of dowels it needs to slide over. All right, we got it pretty close. I think we should be able to get it lined up from the other side now. Okay, so with some Loctite on each of these uh, screws here and the starter all lined up, we can go ahead and get these screws started. So just like on the removal, the, the front one is definitely gonna be the easier one to get in there. So I like to get that one started first. And now the rear, you kind of have to play this game of fishing it through there. If you can't get it, obviously you can just take the, um, the battery and the battery uh, carrier out. But if you're careful and you just sort of feed it through. There we go. All right, so started back in, back to the other side to continue the install. All right, back on the left side here, uh, we've got some uh, primary drive components to go in here. So I'm gonna start with basically the reverse of the removal. So our shim is still in here. We're gonna put the large springs on. And then basically what we wanna do is take the rest of the compensator, uh, I'll actually grab, just to make it a little bit easier, grab the rest of the spring pack, throw that on as well. So now basically what we've got is the compensator assembly and the clutch basket, and that's all gotta go on together. So uh, I'm just gonna pick that up and put it in. Uh, I also, um, I kind of pried this loose and just I'm gonna let it sit here. I'm gonna change this once I get everything else put in. No reason to drip a whole bunch of oil and stuff on that new seal, probably doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna wait till the end. And then we just have to take off this electrical tape that I put on here. And we should be ready to go. So I'm gonna pick those parts up and put them in. All right, 
So here we go. Gonna start with the clutch side, see if that works. And got that compensator started. Clutch in. All right. Cool. So getting that stuff lined up can be a little tricky just because they're heavy. Um, but if you're kind of careful and you do it a little bit at a time, really not a big deal. So we got those just sitting there now. The next thing we got to do is get the hardware put back on. So I'm going to get the right tools here, get the uh, stuff cleaned up a little bit. Um, like this kind of thing, like, I don't know, the service manual might call for a new one of these. I always reuse them. Just make sure to clean all the old Loctite off really well. Uh, same thing on the clutch hub nut. You got some red Loctite that's gonna be built up in those threads. You're just gonna wanna clean that off. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll start to put these back on. All right, so we're gonna start uh, up front with the compensator. So with the bolt all cleaned up, I'm gonna put some red Loctite on here. And I'm gonna get started putting this in. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil under the flange here. All right, so with that snug down, I'm gonna grab the primary locking tool. Now, I know I've said this before, but it's worth mentioning again, you gotta pay attention to what bike you have and what primary you have to make sure you're using the right locking tool. If you use the little one that's shaped like a set of stairs, which is kind of the generic uh, primary tool that's used on a lot of other bikes, if you use that on one of these bikes that's got a thinner primary where the chain kind of overhangs like this, what's gonna happen is, you can see it on the top here, you're gonna wind up forcing the chain into the case and it's gonna, fuck it up, it's gonna cut it up. So you gotta make sure you're using the right tool. So this is the one you wanna use on this particular bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set in here. Like that. Should we get it set nice and even between the teeth there? Okay. So that's snug, that's not gonna come out of the way. And what we're gonna do is first torque this to 100 pounds, loosen it, and then back to 175. And obviously I'm just gonna check my chain, make sure it's not hitting the case anywhere. Okay. So there's 100. I'm gonna undo this, which is gonna require spinning this locking tool around. <clears throat> okay. And now we're gonna go back and go the other way, back to 175. Check that chain again, that looks fine. And go up to 175. So now we can move on to the rear here. So I'm gonna put some red Loctite again on the threads of the clutch nut. And we'll get that started in here. Remembering that this is a left-hand thread. Okay. 
Okay, so when I start to turn this, this is gonna fall out and we're gonna put it in the other way now. Clear on everything. So now I'm gonna tighten this down with the torque wrench to 75 foot-pounds. And again, like I always say, you gotta make sure that your torque wrench works in reverse uh, to do this one. If you use kind of uh, some of them that don't work in reverse, you might tighten and tighten and tighten and not realize it's never gonna click because some don't work in reverse. Okay. So that's that. Pull out the locking tool. Definitely don't want to forget to take this out. And we are kind of well on our way here. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the chain tensioner in. Now I've got our original bolts. I just need to get these cleaned up, get the threads cleaned up, get the oil off here, put some new Loctite on. Then we'll pop the chain tensioner in, pop these bolts in, tighten it up, and uh, We'll be almost there. All right, so with the hardware ready to go, go ahead and put our chain tensioner back in. So I'm gonna slide this under here and get the hardware started. All right, so now that that's back in, we can cut our zip tie off. All right, so a couple more steps here. Just gotta go ahead and put the uh, clutch adjuster back in. Just give this a quick little wipe. Okay. A little oil where it meets the push rod there. And slide that in. Followed by the snap ring. sure that's fully seated. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do, doesn't have to be done this second, you can do it once the cover's back on, but I'm just gonna take the opportunity to do the clutch adjustment now while I'm thinking about it. So I'm gonna pull the cable cover up and I'm gonna take the slack out of the cable by compressing it and then locking it down so we're loose up here at the lever. And then just here. So what we're looking to find is fully seated. And I like to just do this a couple of times just to make sure that, you know, if you got anything in there that needs to be worked out, it gets worked out like a little, I don't know, you get hung up on something or whatever. Shouldn't happen, but um, find your point, make your adjustment. I like to go half a turn. It's my sort of normal go-to. And then we're gonna lock the nut down. Okay. So with that done, Go ahead and release the clutch cable here. And 
check and make sure we're working, which we are. Good to go. All right, so now as good a time as any to get rid of this old seal. Slide the new one in there. Okay, and we are just about done here. So really all that's left to do at this point is grab the new gasket, put the cover on and fill it up, put the derby cover on. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit, grab the other cover, make sure it's all cleaned off, grab the new gasket and we'll get this buttoned up real fast. Okay, so the only thing that we had to do on the primary cover uh, in this case was there's a little plug that was in here and just popped that out. Uh, again, if you were doing this on a bike that had factory forwards, you'd have to get an outer primary cover that had the hole here for the shifter. So I'm gonna put this down for one sec while we put the gasket in place. And Now we grab the cover and slide it on. Okay, just making sure that the gasket is fully aligned the way it's supposed to be, and we're looking good. So I've got our hardware here ready to go. I put a little bit of blue Loctite on each one of these already, uh, so I can just Go ahead and start to get these started. So we're gonna follow the torque sequence, and go around and then we'll go around once more and give them uh, their final torque. All right, so for what it's worth, um, I don't know, you see me use this to do these initial sort of run-ins. Um, I don't put any torque on them. I just use this to sort of run these down and seat them. So kind of like this. One. Too. Just to hold them in place, now we can go ahead and do the rest. In case like that where it feels a little bit tight, we obviously don't want to harm anything. So that's a situation where you got to do the right thing and switch to doing it by hand, which feels totally normal, which shows you how little uh, torque I was putting on with the gun. Um, certainly the gun could get past this, but uh, you don't want it to. You want to know that these fasteners are going to go in nicely. So I would suggest if you don't really have the uh, feel for it, that you just do it by hand. Same thing, a little tight, probably because just these, these are the longer fasteners. Yep, that's fine. Not cross-threaded, not messed up, totally fine. Okay, truthfully, not even gonna bother trying to use the gun on the rest of these long ones. Got that all done, and now we just gotta put the drain plug in, don't forget that, and put some fluid in here and get the derby cover on, and we will be all buttoned up and finally ready to actually start installing the mid controls on here. So with that all buttoned up, like I said, it's time to actually start to get our uh, controls put on. But the first thing I'm actually gonna do is get the crash bar put on. And the reason for that is because it mounts underneath the foot peg mounts. Now, if you were installing the crash bar and you already had your controls on, you'd pull them off and they'd sort of hang there on the right side and it would come all the way off on the left side. And 
put the crash bar in and sort of work it in that way. But with it all disconnected, uh, the way we have it here, it's much easier to put the bar on first. So that's what we're gonna do. But the first step before we do that is, these holes in the frame are notoriously famous for being filled with a bunch of Loctite and maybe the ones that didn't have anything in them, uh, if you've got a bike that didn't already have, you know, a guard on it, get filled with dirt and all kinds of crap. So first thing I'm gonna do is run a thread chaser through all the holes on this side and all the holes on that side. And then we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, crash bar mounted up and I'll show it to you so you can look at the way it mounts versus the other one, like I mentioned, it's quite astonishing. All right, so I don't know if you can see all the junk that just came out of those threads, but it's a lot. So anyway, uh, here's our bunking crash bar. Now, take a look at this. These are the mounts that go onto the frame. All these points of connection, all along both sides. This is mounted in with four bolts on each side, plus one smaller one over here. So you got five and four versus one and one on the other one. When this thing uh, takes an impact, it's gonna take it a lot better. Now, obviously, if it's too strong, you risk actually having the frame bend, but in an impact that's that severe, you're gonna have a problem anyway. These are meant to be, any of these crash guards are meant to be more protection in a low speed or a low side type situation where you're trying to protect the softer parts of the bike, like the tins and bars and fairing and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, you know, if you're worried about your frame bending because of how securely this attaches, you probably have bigger problems. But uh, anyway, so what I'm gonna do is line this up in here and then uh, I've got my hardware here. I'm gonna start to get it put on and uh, we'll get that in place. Then we'll start getting the controls finally put on. Okay, so we've got this more or less in place. Now, what you'd wanna do here uh, is in normal, under normal circumstances, get all your bolts in before you start tightening these down. If I have to loosen these back up to adjust a little bit when we get those other uh, bolts in for the foot pegs, I'll do that, but just wanted to get it on and up and held out of the way. Um, I tightened them down. Looks like we should be able to get all those bolts through, but if I have to straighten it out a little bit, that's no big deal. So with that on, we can finally, finally, uh, start to get the rest of this stuff done. So I'm gonna grab those parts and we'll put them on. So with that all on there, uh, we can go ahead and start to get the uh, foot rest put on along with the uh, foot peg. So grab the hardware here. Now, worth noting, I'm not using the hardware that came with the kit. We've got longer bolts uh, that go along with the uh, crash bar. So if it looks a little different than uh, stock Harley hardware, that's because it is. Now we can get the footboard in here. Okay, and with that through, put our E-clip on. Okay. 
All right, boom. That actually looks pretty good. I thought we were gonna have to adjust that from having been uh, set up in the forward position, but looks pretty good to me. So next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and I guess get this linkage attached here. So these are obviously adjustable. Um, what Harley does is this comes preset and locked down in the sort of stock factory position. I confirm that by just holding it up against one of the ones that we've got here uh, in the shop. So nothing to adjust unless needed, depending on where this lands, but should be a good, good place to start in any event. So I'm gonna take this bolt out. We've actually got two new screws here um, rather than reusing this old one, but I guess what's the difference? They're all the same. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these started. We're gonna use Loctite on both of these for sure. All right, cool. So we're good there. No binding, everything looks good. All right, so last little detail here, we gotta get our shifter arm on. And with that said, uh, the rubber spacer that goes in here, this is important, otherwise this thing is gonna rattle around like no other. Uh, you don't see these missing a lot on the newer bikes, but uh, half the dynas that come in here are missing this. Either somebody took the stuff apart and forgot it when they were putting it back together, or the rubber just wore out and it broke off, but um, definitely wanna make sure that you've, you've got one of those. So. Uh, I've already got the shifter peg on the arm here, and then we've got a nut, a bolt, and a washer here. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this, put this in a place I think makes sense. I like that. So the idea here is that the splines are actually quite a bit of movement up and down. So if you're not happy with where it is, you can always crack this adjustment loose and then have a fine adjustment to go up and down and put this exactly where you want it. So I think I'm pretty happy with where it is for right now. So we're just gonna put these on here. And no Loctite on this because it's already got lock patch on there uh, from the package, so it's good to go. Just grab a couple, looks like half inch wrenches and uh, we'll get this buttoned up. Good to me. All right, so that's pretty much it on our left side here. We've got uh, the clutch still open here because I realized actually we're gonna have to loosen that again to go up and do the handlebars anyway. So I'm just gonna leave that the way it is. But otherwise we're looking pretty good here. So I think from here, I'm gonna pop over to the other side and we'll get the other side put on. All right, so back over here on the right side of the bike, we're gonna do this a little bit out of order. So. Obviously we can't put our foot peg, uh, foot rest mount back on until we have the pipe on. So you could go ahead and just put the pipe on now probably, but I've got all this stuff here. So what we're gonna do is get the master cylinder and uh, brake linkage and all that stuff set up. It'll be easier to do that with the pipe off. We'll let the uh, assembly hang down uh, and then we'll put the pipe on the way you normally would when you're changing a pipe. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, go ahead and get the master cylinder mounted onto uh, the bracket here. So I just have to cut that zip tie that I was holding it up with earlier. And I'm just gonna slide this in here and this is gonna go here and we're gonna use the, the original bolts uh, that came out. And actually, before I do that, let me just grab these bolts. I'm gonna Loctite these. Let's get that slid back there. Okay, 
one started. Just gotta do the other one here. There we go. All right. Sorry, I'm kinda working left-handed over here with the camera over there, so a little difficult to do, but we will survive. Okay, tighten these down. One. Okay. Now, I'm not, you know, I probably should have pulled these out. I left these in here so you could see what I did. Um, these bolts that are all, really can't even see them now. These bolts that are all in here, these were just in here to help align the uh, crash bar. So I'm gonna take all those out before they get any more in the way than they already are. Um, but I kind of left them there just so I could show you what I did and then I forgot to take them out. It looks like I put the bolt I thought was the permanent one is actually not going to be the one that stays there. I thought the one that was by itself that was in this notch was this one here. But it's actually that one there. So we can correct that error by just using this bolt. They're the same. And putting this one in and tightening it down and then taking the other one out. So now that we've got all that there, uh, we can keep moving along with the install here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put the pin in here. And actually, yeah, just put that in. And we can probably do this just as easily with this connected to the bike, but being able to sort of pull it out here and line everything up maybe makes it a little bit easier. I don't know. It might be easier to do this if you didn't have to hold the master assembly, but that wasn't so hard. All right, so with that connected, our next step to, be, next step to do is gonna be to get the assembly mounted onto the bike. Now, there's a short screw that you would normally use here, but because of the sissy bar, I'm sorry, because of the engine guard, we're gonna use this longer one. Okay, that's started, we can snug it down. And check our alignment here. All right. Okay. So we are good there. And I think, yeah, our last piece, what you would normally do here is get your brake rod connected and then bolt this up. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna connect this now just because I'm not sure how much clearance I'm gonna have once the pipe is on. I honestly just can't remember exactly what you can get in there wrench-wise. So I'm just gonna put this on now. And then like I said, we'll let the whole thing just kind of rest down here. So let me grab the bolt for that. All right, so get a little Loctite on here and Get this attached.
All right. So obviously the next thing would be to get this bolted in here, but what I'm gonna do for right now, like I said, is leave these bolts on the side, let this hang loose here, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the pipe and we'll put that on, get that all hooked up, get our new brackets on in the back, and I'll show you how we're gonna set that up to work with the saddlebag bracket, the bunking slider, the exhaust bracket, it's all gonna work together. Uh, so we'll get that put on once the pipe's on, we'll get this on, and uh, well, we're gonna move on to phase two. All right, so first step in getting the pipe on is to get the rear bracket put on. So it's an HPI pipe that's gonna be going on here. So this little guy right here is all it takes for the rear bracket for this. Uh, pretty well designed to be able to put a pipe on that just needs this as a bracket as opposed to that enormous thing that came off there. But anyway, um, when you've got a situation where you've got a bunch of parts that all connect to the same spot, so this hole right here is where this bracket goes, and obviously there needs to be a bolt here for the uh, bunking rear slider. You also, in this case, need a support bracket, which is this little round piece for the saddlebag. So for the uh, Lowrider ST, uh, there are aftermarket brackets available. This one is made by Vance and Hines. HPI has their own as well. They look exactly the same. Um, this bolts on here and this gives you the space to mount your bag. So this little round piece, we took off the old bracket. But what I was getting at was all these things mount in the same spot. So what you have to kind of figure out is the order of operations. And you know, you might have to get a little bit creative in order to get it all to fit, but this works really well uh, all together. So basically, this is gonna stay on because this is the first thing to go down. This is gotta be, stru this is structural, so we don't want it on top of this bracket. We want this on first. So this is gonna stay right where it is. This is gonna go on second, and we've actually flipped this around from the way it was in the stock configuration where the little mount was on the outside of the old bracket. We're putting it on the inside of this one to keep it lined up. This is gonna go on next. Well, now, because we've got this uh, bunking bracket in here, we need to put a spacer behind this so that it sits flat. If this wasn't here, this would sit flat right onto the frame. Uh, so I've got a little spacer here. So that's gonna go in behind here and that's gonna sit there like that. And then the very last piece is the HPI exhaust bracket. It's gonna bolt through all of it. So all that together, uh, that's gonna, oops, that's gonna work. Uh, that's not gonna be a problem. Everything's gonna lined up. We've checked all of it. so. No, no need to worry there. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do uh, before we get this put on is, this is the original bolt. Um, I think it's probably a little bit short for the application we're doing here because we've added in a couple more layers. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab one that's just slightly longer so we get a little bit better bite uh, on the frame back here. And uh, I'll start bolting all this up and then we'll grab the pipe and we'll get it put on. All right, so our first step in getting the pipe on is we're gonna change out the exhaust gaskets. Now, if the exhaust gaskets look good and you're just taking the same pipe off and putting it back on, you don't necessarily have to change them, but uh, for when the pipe has different flanges, which the OE head pipe and the HPI pipe do, sometimes you need to change to a different style gasket. Now, if this HPI pipe was new out of the box, it would come with a set of these flat gaskets. This one is coming off a different bike, so, uh, we just went and grabbed a set of these off the shelf. Already pulled the old gaskets out of the heads. So we're just gonna pop these new flat ones in. And now we're actually ready to grab the pipe. I'm gonna bring it over here. And again, the installation is gonna be a little different because the pipe is all put together. Normally you'd be putting it on one header at a time, then putting the collector and muffler on. In this case, it's all together already as one. The O2 sensors are already in it. Just gonna put it right on. So I'm gonna grab that, bring it back over, and we'll get this wrapped up.
Okay, so we've got our uh, flange nuts all started. The pipe's still loose. You can see here it still will move a little bit. So our next step is gonna be to get the uh, bracket back here connected. Now, I know I always talk, uh, say a lot about how much I love the HPI pipes and how good they are. Here's one more example. These are so well made and fit so well that even without disconnecting it, it just pops right into place. There's no forcing, there's no pulling. It literally just slides right in, put all your nuts in. It's that simple. So next thing I'm gonna do is get our hardware together for this clamp back here and get the socket ready. And we should be almost there. Push that through, our nut and washer, get that started. Okay, and we're basically there. So now all I have to do is start tightening down. We're gonna evenly tighten down uh, the nuts for the head. We're gonna come back and tighten this. We're gonna check all our clearances and alignment and then plug our O2 sensors in and then put this footrest back on. All right, I think the camera stopped there for some reason. I don't know if our battery's dying. It's not, so I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, I hope it didn't die before I did all that, but I just got these two uh, cylinders evenly back and forth tightened down. Now I'm gonna come back here and tighten down the bracket. All right, well, I don't know what's going on with this camera. You all literally just saw me stick my face into it and look and make sure the battery wasn't dead. And then I turned to tighten this bracket down and I looked back and the battery was dead. So no idea what's going on. Change the battery. Anyway, pipe's all bolted down now. I'm sorry about that. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is, I guess while I'm talking is, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug these O2 sensors in. Get this wire routed how I like it. Get the front one connected. I'll do that in a second, but in any event, pipe is on, controls are almost on. I guess what you should do right now, let's go ahead and do that. I don't know if we're still on camera. Yeah, we are. So it's got our extended bolts from the Bunking crash bar kit. Put some Loctite on there. And our socket set up here. Let's pull this guy up and into place. All right, now we're pretty much good to go. Obviously I need to wipe this pipe down. I also need to go back and double check the torque on all those uh, bolts up here on the crash bar, make sure they're all tight. Um, but we are essentially finished with phase one of this project, which was the pipe and the mid controls and the crash bar. Obviously the outer fairing is still off. We're gonna have to put the fairing support bracket back on, but we'll tackle all that stuff when we get up to the top part of the bike and we start working on the handlebars. So the next phase of work we're gonna do on this bike is move to the rear section. And we've got a bunch of stuff back here that can be done with the fender in place on the bike. However, 
uh, we've got a couple things that can't. So in order to put uh, the fender strut lights on, we're gonna be doing, these side struts need to come off, which really makes it much easier if you just take the whole fender off and do it all as one. We've got a wiring harness to run, so we're gonna take the entire section off, we're gonna do the shock, we're gonna get all those lights done, and we're gonna do it all together in one shot while the fender's off the bike, which is gonna make it the easiest way to do it. So uh, I'm gonna get started on that right now, but unfortunately we are running definitely out of time on this video. So you're gonna have to stick around and wait till the next video in order to catch that phase and then the phase that comes right after that, which is gonna be the handlebars. So if you're watching this in real time, you might have to wait a little while to see the next part of this, but if you're watching this after we've uploaded them all, just make sure you click on to the next video and we'll see you there.